refreshed it big and then you poured it in for your dough to mix up where is your starter then the question came like is the starter all gone at that point do I need to start over no because you'll have starter left over you'll pour the 200 grams in to the what you're gonna be mixing up for the dough and you'll still have like this much left over in your container so that will just continue to be your starter forever and ever amen and then um, another question was, how long do I bake the bread after I take the lid off? Because I forgot to say that. About 20 more minutes. That's approximate. I would really suggest that you use your eyes. It needs to be a nice golden color. You saw how dark mine was, and it was not overbaked on the inside. Um, I, I think people usually tend to underbake, not overbake. So don't be afraid of a nice, strong, dark color or brownish color. Um, and then I wanted to mention about the salt and the water. I think in the one where we were mixing up the dough, I said that I just add the salt in right away. I don't add it later and that I put in more salt than usual. And I just wanted to say, you should experiment and try doing the salt later because I have read that by adding the salt earlier, I just wanted to inform you of this, buyer beware, before you take my approach, that the salt tends to like take some of the moisture out. I'm not sure what the um, what the reaction is with the salt, the water and the flour that makes the salt sort of draw away the moisture. But the reason why it's added later is so that that doesn't happen. So go ahead and try the method where the salt gets added later. See if you think the results are better. For my purposes, um, it's just so much simpler for me to add it in right away. Um, and then I wanted to go over these and give credit where credit is due and point you to some really solid resources. Uh, first is this Tartine Cookbook by Chad Robertson. And most of what I showed you through my tutorials was the Tartine method just adapted by me, the way I do it. Which, one of the great things about Tartine is that he goes over his method, he explains it carefully, he walks you through his whole process, but then he shows you how um, other people have taken his process and adapted it for themselves and how well that works for them. And it's really fun to kind of read the stories of that. Also, I'll let you know that his country loaf, kind of the one that we made that I've adapted, that recipe is available. I've printed it out here, but it's available for free on the New York Times. And you can just Google that and print it out for free. You don't have to buy this big cookbook, but I do love it. Um, then I wanted to say Peter Reinhardt's Artisan Breads Every Day is an absolutely wonderful resource for home bakers. This is actually where I started sourdough and I started by doing his um, starter method which is a much thicker method and it is um, a refrigerated method that's much thicker so you could try that method and it is a really good one and I highly recommend this cookbook. I've, I've made so many things out of here. And I sometimes will adapt um, Tartine's method, which is higher hydration, to Peter Reinhardt's recipes, because they're both so good. Okay. Hi, bud. Um, and then uh, also, you could go to my blog to look at more resources, um, Instagram folks who are really inspiring with their sourdough. I've got links to all that stuff. I'm also putting links to all the videos on that page on my blog, which the page is, uh, my blog is called hopeandstay.com and the page is called sourdough. Okay, and so then the last thing I wanted to say, I made a little list here so I wouldn't forget, is that why make sourdough? Especially for you if you're a Christian, like, What's the point of all this? Is this just, you know, a silly hobby? And on one hand, yes, absolutely it is. It's just a hobby, it's just fun. But also, one really good reason to do this, just like doing anything, is to bless people. And it may seem like a small thing, but it is a real tangible way that you can take what you've been given 
and bless people with it. And so I would just encourage you that you're stuck at home, where most of the country's under shelter in place, most of the world is in shelter in place right now, and why not just take one small step toward blessing others? It could be this, it could be writing a song, it could be baking something else, it could be planting a garden, there could be a million things that you could choose to do to bless others. But I just want to remind you that you have been blessed to be a blessing to others. And I think there's a little bit of an attitude out there like, well, if I just get busy blessing others, won't that minimize the grief I feel over this COVID-19 or the loss of a job or the real suffering that's happening even as a result of the shelter in place, not to mention the, the disease itself. And I would simply say no. Blessing others doesn't minimize the fact that we're all in a trial right now. But what it does do is it helps to shine forth the fact that as Christians we've been blessed with Christ. And so go be a blessing in tangible ways and then let people know that what the motivation is behind that blessing is Christ and that you can do all these little blessing things to, to God's glory and as a way of pointing to him. So I just encourage you in that to do it for those reasons, to, to have a ton of fun with it, to bring your kids along and that's all I got. Happy baking. Thank you.